All right, now to give us more insights in terms of how the policies between these two leaders, in fact, differ and how this will, of course, go down amongst the Tory party members, we're being joined by Mr. Alexander Claxon, who's a political analyst and founder of the Global Political Think Tank. He's joining us from London. Now, Mr. Clarkson, this, this is an interesting bit of a contest between Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss, who represent two divergent views in terms of how the leadership in Britain should in fact proceed, although they're both from the Tory party. The big issue is that of taxation. Rishi Sunak has said that now is not the right time to reduce taxes, but Liz Truss has accused his policies of leading Britain into recession. How are the Tory party members looking at this? <coughs> well, f first of all, thank you for having me. So the Tory party members are more aligned with the position of Liz Truss. Obviously, traditionally, the Conservative Party has always uh, proposed lower taxes and uh, less uh, regulation. And that's exactly what Liz Truss uh, is proposing. Now, the Tory party members are... Uh, are not at the moment uh, particularly fond of Rishi uh, Sunak for, for two reasons. First of all, uh, they blame him for the downfall of Boris Johnson. And we have to remember that Boris Johnson still remains uh, rather popular among the Conservative uh, Party members. And secondly, uh, many members blame him for the current state of the British economy. Uh, the inflation uh, has reached over 9% and is likely to reach uh, over uh, over 10 percent, or maybe even 12 percent, uh, the growth has uh, uh, has slowed down substantially. Now, of course, there are external factors for that, including the war in Ukraine. But many party members are blaming uh, Rishi Sunak's economic policies uh, mm -hmm. for the situation in Britain, and for that reason, uh, they uh, believe that uh, Liz Truss's uh, policies of lowering taxes would be better uh, for the British economy. And for that reason. Uh, Liz Truss is currently the favourite to become the Prime Minister of the UK uh, by, by becoming the, the leader of the Conservative Party. Absolutely indeed. That's, that appears to be the crucial difference between the two leaders. Uh, now, in terms of the policy on the war in Ukraine, Boris Johnson had been one of the loudest voices in Europe who had been supporting Ukraine in, in the war against Russia. He had said that Britain, of course, stoutly stands behind the people of Ukraine. But with a change in leadership at 10 Downing Street, do you think Britain's policy towards Ukraine is likely to change? I don't think so. Um, you know, regardless of who is the leader of Britain, I think the policy towards Ukraine and Russia will remain the same. Uh, there are several reasons for that. I mean, historically, uh, Britain's policy towards uh, Russia has been consistent regardless of who has been the leader. And that includes not just the Conservative Party, but also the, the Labour Party, when the Labour Party was in charge. Now, we know from uh, Liz Truss's uh, policies uh, as the Foreign Secretary of Britain uh, that she is very much supportive of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, her position has always been that Russia should lose uh, the war in Ukraine and that Britain should provide as much support as possible uh, to Ukraine, including military uh, aid as well. Right. Uh, now, obviously, Rishi Sunak has been the um, has been the chancellor, and so he hasn't been involved as much uh, in foreign policy issues. But uh, it must be remembered that support for Ukraine is a very popular policy in Britain among the population, not just the Conservative Party members, but just more broadly uh, among the the people of Britain. So any leader uh, who is responsible for the policy in Ukraine uh, will also support uh, Ukraine and stand against Russia because that will make him popular among the uh, the British public. And so for that reason, I think that uh, Boris Johnson's policy towards Ukraine right. and Russia will persist regardless of who is the next leader. Absolutely indeed, uh, Mr. Alexander Clarkson. Do continue to stay on with us because there's more that we want to talk to you. But the two contenders here, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, of course, will face a whole host of challenges as soon as they occupy the 10 Downing Street office. Now, whoever replaces Boris Johnson will inherit an economy that's been buffeted by the cost of living crisis as inflation has accelerated to its highest rate in almost about four decades in Britain. The rising prices remain the biggest concern. Unrest among worker unions is also mounting from rail staff to postal workers to teachers to trial lawyers. All have either declared a walkout or are debating doing so. The new leader will also have to repair a fractured party that is looking tired after 12 years in power. The party has suffered under Boris Johnson's administration. It's been lurching from one crisis to another. 
and restoring the confidence and trust of the voters in the party for the general elections in 2024 is going to be a monumental challenge. The new Prime Minister will also have to mend relations with the EU that have been strained to near breaking point by Johnson's threat of reverting on the Brexit agreement that he, that he had negotiated. Now, inflation is likely to remain high throughout the rest of this year and next. Now, economists have also warned that there is a possibility that the United Kingdom's economy is likely to enter into a recession in the third quarter of this year, if it is not already into one. The recent support announced by Rishi Sunak when he was with when he was the ex chancellor of the exchequer is likely to help the low income households but with energy bills that are going up and will go up during the winter months the current support is simply not enough now there is both a need and also a scope to do more and another long term challenge for the country of course is its woeful productivity performance and also steering the economy to net zero in terms of emissions now, the ongoing war in Ukraine and also the issues around higher energy and food prices associated with it, not to mention the associated security and geopolitical issues, will continue to remain a top priority. Now, Mr. Clarkson, if I can bring you back on this. Now, at this point of time, the leadership question is also a preparation for the 2024 general elections that are to happen. Under Boris Johnson, the Tory party was lurching from one scandal after another. So there is a crisis of trust that the people in Britain actually have in the Tory leadership. Which among these two candidates do you think is likely to be the person who would provide the British people with a leadership that would be free of scandals? So this is quite an interesting uh, issue because, first of all, when we look towards the general election in 2024, uh, Liz Truss actually loses uh, to Keir Starmer, uh, the, the Labour leader, uh, even though she is more popular than Rishi Sunak among the Conservative Party members. Nevertheless, Rishi Sunak currently does better in the polls uh, compared to uh, the Labour leader. So the question here for the Conservative Party members is, uh, who do they go for? Do they go for the person who uh, they uh, believe will provide them with the best conservative policies, such as Liz Truss, uh, when it comes to taxation? Or do they go for Rishi Sunak, who has a better chance of defeating uh, the Labour leader in 2024, because given the uh, the crisis in the in the country, given the economic uh, challenges that you you described just now, uh, there is a very high possibility that the Conservatives would lose uh, in 2024. Uh, the Conservatives have been in charge now for for a substantial number of years, uh, and so it, it's just a no normal uh, process where people just expect change and believe that right. a, a different party will be able to, to do a better job economically. So that might happen in 2024, uh, especially if Liz Truss is prime minister, because as I said, currently she is losing in the polls substantially to uh, Keir Starmer, the Labour leader. All right. Interesting the way you've put it. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Clarkson, for joining us and getting us all those insights. It remains to be seen as to, you know, how, how things, of course, stack up in, in this very crucial Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.